Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Uh, part of the pre-residency audio academy and what I've wanted to do to help those P1s, P2s, and P3s uh, get on to uh, residency uh, is also helping them with their scholarships and uh, applications to uh, various internships and things like that. So one of the bigger scholarships that just comes up is the... Uh, Walmart Health Equity Scholarship. There are 10 scholarships, $5,000 each, for a student who is a P1, P2, P3, or even pre-pharmacy student. So in this episode, I'm going to teach you not only how to get this scholarship, but how to apply for scholarships in general and how to use uh, what they're asking uh, to make sure that you are putting a solid application in. And before you say that there's no way I could win the scholarship, uh, first of all, somebody has to win it. And second, uh, very few people actually do. Uh, the, the work uh, that they have to do in their regular lives, uh, they say, well, you know, I mean, the chances versus you know what time I would put into it isn't worth it. But I do want to tell you that it's worth it to do it whether or not you get the money. And that's the key is that by doing this, you really articulate in two pages, basically creating a letter of intent for residency ahead of time, uh, what it is you want to do. So when you're talking to other people, to the preceptors, to those types of people, that you really know what you're doing and how to do it. So I'm happy to help anybody in the pre-residency audio academy or any of my other uh, paid courses uh, that are P1, P2, P3 that are going for this uh, scholarship. Uh, You'll just email me your uh, written uh, 750 word uh, thing and, and I can kind of give you a little review and, and talk a little bit about it. Okay, well let's start where you can find this material. So you go to residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash pre-residency uh, and in the first free general resources I've got a tab for Walmart Health Equity Scholarship Support. Uh, so you can go in there to see if it's you know it kind of fits with what you're doing and then uh, what the 750 word uh, document actually is, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that and, and how you really want to approach it. Okay. So here's the actual web page, uh, and the goal is to obviously help those serving in rural areas, medically underserved areas, or populations, and uh, health professional shortage areas. So uh, to be eligible, you do have to be uh, pre accepted to a pharmacy school, P1, P2, P3, or it, they do make accommodations for a three-year program, P1 or P2, or if you're P2 through P5 in a 0 to 6, 7 program, you do have to have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. And if you're in one of those schools that doesn't give GPAs, they said that email them uh, and then you can figure something out. But uh, if you have a 3.0 or higher, that's kind of the, the bar that you have to be at. But GPA is not a part of it. So it, you just have to, it, 3.0 and higher, you're in. Then the rest of it has nothing to do with your personal financial situation. It has everything to do with what you've done, how you articulate what you've done, and how other people will recommend you, uh, and then basically, you know, vouching for what you've done uh, for these particular groups. So let's talk about the big piece, which is, uh, this is a dead link, the Program Information Application Instructions. It's a 404 uh, error, but once you actually register for it, you'll get a a proper link to the PDF. Um, So when you go into uh, this, the applicant essay is 40%, uh, 5% of it's spelling and grammar, but, you know, or no, it's 35%, uh, but five points goes to spelling and grammar and 30% to it. So a third of your S application is completely controllable. It is how well you have written this essay. And then if you add the five points you get for a good resume format, that's not what's even in the resume. It's just, did you do it well with the headings and the writing and that two page resume? Um, So 40 points are completely under your control uh, in this written document or in the written documents that you present. So let's let's actually look at what they're asking and then I'll show you how to transform that into an outline to actually write the essay. And the reason that this is kind of a a big thing for me is that I'm going to guess that if you're from an underserved area, that maybe being an English major isn't exactly the first thing that came to mind because your first language might not be English. Uh, And I find that very likely. So I really want to help those. uh, I've talked about this before, but it's a really big deal because uh, my dad uh, came to this country from Peru and uh, the language barrier, the not the 
you know, college degree barrier, those types of things, uh, really affected him. And, and I saw how it affected him. Now, he came out great, uh, really, you know, hardworking guy, great guy to talk to. And I just know that just a little bit of help on the side of understanding rhetorical concepts, uh, logos, pathos, ethos, those types of things that are just, you know, second nature to anybody that uh, is an English major or does these types of things uh, is really an important quality and thing to learn as you're moving on towards places where you want to do residency and things like that because you have to articulate your value. So let's actually talk talk about what they want and then I'll talk about how you would put that in an outline. So it's describe how your life experiences influence your decision to pursue pharmacy. And what I think I'm going to do actually is I'm going to that paragraph into a Word document. And what you want to do when you're applying for a scholarship in general is first see what they're asking. So uh, they've done this in three sentences. And what I want to do is break it up just a little bit more. But the first thing they're asking is, describe how your life experiences influenced your decision to pursue a pharmacy career and desire to serve in rural areas, medically underserved areas or populations or health professional shortage areas. Include any key volunteer, extracurricular, employment or academic experiences that solidified and or demonstrate your commitment to these communities. Describe how you envision contributing to health equity as a pharmacist in these communities. So what you can do from this is make one of these, which is a scholarship outline. So uh, what you'll wanna do is first figure out, okay, well, 750 words, how much is that? And that's about two double spaced pages at 11 point font, okay? Now, the box that you'll probably be putting this in uh, is not going to be you know, doing the spacing and things like that. Uh, but what you will wanna do is kind of figure out like about how many paragraphs do you need and what do you wanna say in each one? So the first paragraph, introduction, outline what you're going to say. Now, I actually write my first paragraph at the end after I've written the entire document. So it's really just going back and saying, okay, this is what I'm going to say now that I've said it, uh, and this is how I do it. So when I took the um, GRE, um, graduate record exam, uh, what you are challenged to do is uh, create these like five paragraph prompts. And what you wanna do is you kind of create the three boxes of evidence write the conclusion, and then you write the introduction, and it actually comes out a lot better. So that's kind of my big tip, is to, to write the introduction last. Second, just first write all the life experiences you had. Growing up in a medically underserved area, just kind of uh, even talk to friends and family, and just like, man, you know, what was it like growing up there, and all of this? This should take the person that's reading this to that place. So you wanna be very visual, talk about all the things that you remember, and things like that. And then you'll edit it and cut it down. And that's what I'm really great at is editing. I am that that is my like superpower is is editing something to make it even more effective. Uh, paragraph three. So you have a desire to serve. That's great. But what they want is evidence. So they don't want to just give the scholarship. Somebody says, yeah, you know, I, after school, I would consider a rural area. What they want is somebody that has been volunteering, doing extracurriculars, being employed and maybe even focusing their academics on that area. And I'll talk a little bit about Arizona's program. Uh, just to give you an example, I'm sure there are other colleges that have those types of programs, uh, but I know Arizona's is a very good one in uh, I've actually talked uh, with some people about that. Uh, number four, how will the money contribute to your future? So uh, what are the contrib contributions that you want to make when you are graduated? And, and you know, where do you see yourself going in residency? And that's probably one of the easiest ways to do it is to just pick a residency or two uh, that makes sense. Now, remember, this is Walmart. So I would expect that community residency programs would be especially important uh, and saying that maybe you might want to work for them. I don't know if uh, that is really part of it, but certainly kind of taking at least into account who is funding it and who Walmart serves. So uh, many times in some areas, the Walmart is the only place to get groceries and those types of things. And then a summary and closing that kind of uh, encapsulates it. So uh, don't feel like you have to stick to five paragraphs. I'm just saying that uh, you do want to first make sure that you answer the question because so many times uh, someone will write the essay and they'll just talk about their life experiences, but never actually give the desire to serve an evidence or they might do the first two, but not the third or some, 
you know, kind of combination of that. The big deal is answer all of the questions they ask. I tell you what, if you do that, you are already way ahead of all the other applicants because what happens is, is they kind of drift. And if you can answer the question, you are in good shape. And then I just put the actual uh, link to it here. So you can find this health equity scholarship outline. Uh, so in the course here, pre-residency audio academy, uh, and then you just kind of scroll down to the first part to the free general resources. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about uh, a rural health program. And you know, students from the University of Arizona who are in this program, this is hopefully a no brainer, like you should apply because you have evidence already of that. And I think that's gonna be the biggest part of it. So let's talk a little bit about two of you know, the, the courses and the things that uh, they um, are going to be going through. Now, obviously, if they're doing APIs, they're not eligible for it, not P1, P2, P3, but it's important that you kind of have an understanding of, of what it is to articulate how you're going to serve. So part of their graduate level pharmacy course is to prepare a community health assessment. And what this is really doing is saying, okay, well, given pharmacy services in a rural Arizona area, what would that be like? Okay, and so you take some data, whether it's the census or things like that, uh, according to the you know, community's health status, and you know, what are the things that you could improve as a pharmacist or a group of pharmacists, and what are the things that they need? And what this does is shows that not only have you done some work on this, but you're really starting to think about, okay, well, what would I do when I graduate? And this helps you answer that third part of the question, which is, you know, how do you see yourself helping? Well, this is the data, this is the need, and this is how I would help really, really makes your application super strong. Uh, the second thing is to talk a little bit about the health disparities themselves and understand what health disparity you particularly want to work with. So what happens is, is there's too much telling and not showing. And the key is to kind of pick that area. Okay, I'm going to a rural area or a low socioeconomic status area. I've interacted with under uninsured patients and this is what it's been like. Now when you're telling your story, I will tell you from a, a writer's point of view, it is so much easier to do this as a single person. So let me tell you a, a quick story. Uh, I met a pharmacy student who worked in a food bank and to come to find out that food banks don't actually give people food. These are the big food banks that distribute food to the centers and it's the centers that actually give out the food so this person came to this cent uh, food bank and they didn't know that they just said look we we just are out of food and you know my, my family isn't going to make it if we can't you know kind of uh, get this food and so uh, by talking about this story where this person comes over, very tearful gentleman comes in and just, you know, says it and they're able to kind of package something together, but, you know, explains where the food uh, distribution center is that he should have gone to um, and all of that. Uh, it really is just an absolutely tear-jerking story, but that's the kind of story that you want to put in there and to show that not only are you helping, but you can articulate that value to them. So super important. And then something else that you really want to do in the narrative uh, in terms of location, and I'm familiar with Phoenix because I, although I'm, you know, a citizen of Iowa, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a resident of Iowa. Uh, I also have a home in Arizona and lived in Arizona. So when I see the Phoenix Metro, I know it pretty well. And when I see Prescott and Flagstaff and uh, Casa Grande and Florence, uh, those aren't too far. I mean, Flag's two hours north of uh, Phoenix, but um, those aren't terribly far from a city center. And it's amazing how you can get these underserved areas that are really close to a large population. So it would be talking about like being at Fort Defiance or being in Nogales or being in uh, Kingman and those kinds of areas and uh, talking about your experience. So when you're constructing the narrative, you really, really want to talk about place uh, and then the people and then you know bring it down to a single person 
and their story. So I'm happy to help anybody that's you know in any of my courses uh, with this. You know, you would just send your 750 word thing to me, and I'll give you some uh, feedback on it. Uh, I did actually teach Comp One and Comp Two, and it's kind of a shame because this is really a great Comp Two assignment. Uh, logos, ethos, pathos, you know, uh, all of those rhetorical constructs that you would use, and it's just awesome. So again, residency.teachable.com, pre-residency audio academy. Uh, go in there and you can kind of find the details about this scholarship and uh, my outline on what you would do. Uh, and then again, I just kind of feel for those students that probably didn't have English as their first language. And uh, my first language was not English. Uh, I, I learned Spanish first and my parents were like, okay, well, we'll teach them Spanish and then, you know, the, the school system will teach them English. But I saw how important English was that I went all the way to getting an English degree. And actually, I was in an English PhD program. So uh, I didn't finish it. I ended up with a master's, uh, which is kind of a combined English uh, human computer interaction thing. But uh, again, I, I really, this is kind of really close to my heart, and I really want you to succeed. So uh, please do apply for the scholarship. If you don't get the scholarship, what you will have is two pages about how you will uh, kind of move forward. Uh, what are the things in your past? What are the things that you're doing currently? And what are the things in your future? And nothing is more valuable than that kind of roadmap and setting goals. They have that Harvard study that said that, you know, the 3% of Harvard students that had written goals had more income and, and success than the other 97% combined. So writing this down as a way to articulate your goals is huge. If you're in kind of a residency class right now, uh, ask if this is something you could do for credit or something like that. But in some way, uh, I, I hope you do uh, apply for this because uh, I think that you know the $5,000, yes, that would validate that you were one of the top 10 but I think these two pages would be absolutely huge in making sure that you are successful as you move toward residency or even a community position within you know, Walmart or one of the chains where you are serving a group like that. Uh, I'll finish with this. Uh, when I first went to uh, Tempe after graduating from uh, college, uh, I was going to go right back to college because I, I wanted to be a writer. And, and so I'm taking classes at Arizona State. And it's funny, I was talking about Arizona and I've got an Arizona State sweatshirt on. And uh, one of the areas where I worked, I, when I, I ended up in Tempe when, when school started. But when I first started working, I actually worked in Phoenix, right by where Grand Canyon University is. And it was so much easier for the patients when I can speak Spanish to them and ask them things in Spanish. And yeah, from time to time, it's a little annoying that, you know, you use your Spanish and then they say, why isn't this $5? Ah, but uh, it is so much more polite and respectful uh, to talk in a person's uh, native language. And I think that that experience was really impactful as I kind of, you know, moved through, through my career and uh, when I talk about access and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I've been there. I've, I've helped those that, you know, are in areas that maybe were a bit underserved or a population that, you know, doesn't have the language uh, right yet as they're kind of moving towards, uh, you know, a place in their lives where uh, they're going to do better or their children are going to do better. So uh, I do hope that, you know, you, you do send me this application. I do hope that you uh, give it a shot. Uh, as they say, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. All right, Tony the Pharmacist at gmail.com, residency.teachable.com forward slash P forward slash pre residency.